Paula, tell me about Klanglichter. First of all, where is it? Because it's not, of course, a place, Klanglichter, is it? It's the title of the festival. Exactly. It's the title of the festival and it means lights of sound. And uh, it's uh, based in Zisa. It's a very small town in the, uh, near to Basel in Switzerland. It's in the countryside. It's a town with about 6,000 inhabitants. And there is a very beautiful place, very beautiful hall. It's an old fab fabric. Um, how do you say? Fabric? Old factory. Factory, thank you. Yeah. Um, where they used to, to make clothes until about 100 years ago or, or maybe even less. And it was renewed and made, uh, they made it into a cultural center. And um, it's, there is a very nice atmosphere, and very nice ambient in the, in the hall. And is it a chamber hall or can you fit an orchestra in there as well? Um, we do mainly chamber concerts. You could probably, also with bigger groups, bigger groups fit in there, also choirs, uh, chamber music, chamber choirs fit in there. You could probably fit also a chamber orchestra, but uh, my festival is about chamber music with bigger groups also, but uh, yeah. And how did you come by the name Klanglichter? <laughs> It was, um, <clears throat> I used to live close to Zisa, to, in, this, in this area, and I knew this hall, and uh, when I, after many different ideas, I decided that it was, uh, I wanted to give, uh, go to, to try to uh, organize concert there in this hall, this precise hall. And then I went there and I looked around and I tried to feel the hall to see if it was an appropriate place, because there are usually not classical music concerts in this hall. They are, that's the first um, time that yeah we, we, we have did classic music concert in this hall. So I tried to fill the hall, to fill the place. And uh, there are very big windows in this hall. And uh, there are some columns in the middle. And uh, there was a very particular light. It was so uh, autumn, I think. Yeah, it was autumn. There was a very particular light, and it came in in very different ways. And so it was a mixture between. There was a world inside of the hall, but you could still feel the world outside of the hall. And I, I was very fascinated from this um, game of light. How you want to call it. And then thinking about this, this feeling, the feeling that I had there came the name Klanglichter. And I think it's also appropriate because we want to be the concert, we want to like set lights. How would you, how would you translate Klanglichter? <laughs> Klanglichter, yeah. The sound of light? The lights, yeah. Yes, the sound of light. The, yeah. the, but it's Klang is more than sound, isn't it? It's a sort yeah. of the impact of light, I suppose, as well. Yeah, it's it's a word that can be interpreted in, in yeah, it has a bigger field of meaning, let's say. It reminds of many different things. And does that um, uh, impact the way that you uh, program the music? Yeah, exactly. The idea, the main idea of the fest, at the base of the festival, is to um, to play beautiful music, very simple, <laughs> with great musicians. And I have the big luck of knowing many very good musicians. And um, what um, um, the, the main idea was to um, do whatever I wanted, because often I'm mainly a chamber music pianist myself. And uh, mainly I was asked to play this program or this program. I had uh, not very much choice often, not very much choice in the program. And I had so many ideas. I know so many people. I would like that violinist to play that piece. And I would like to play this piece with this cellist. So that was the first um, aim, to, to have the freedom to, to create a place and a venue uh, and, and um, Veranstaltung, how do you say? Um, sorry, <laughs> um, an occasion to to express myself through um, the programming, and um, 
to ask also the other musicians what do they think about the program. We, we make the programs also actually always together with the musicians that play in every single concert. And um, uh, organizing concerts in a small place in the countryside, it means to uh, be open to a certain kind of public also. It's not the classical public of people that come uh, dressed always perfect and they have the abonnement to the open houses. Um, there are many of these people of music that know a lot about classical music. They do go from Zisa or from the um, place next to Zisa to, uh, regularly to Basel, to Zurich, to big concerts. And then they see the quality of our concerts and then they come in this fabric, in this factory, and they found the same quality but much closer in a much more intimate um, atmosphere. And there, there, there are many people that came to the concert because of the hall, because they knew the hall, they went to, to the bar, they went to other cultural events that are happening in this hall. They loved the place and they suddenly saw their classical music concert and they thought, why not, let's have a look. And they became, sorry, yeah, they became regular customers of our concerts. Now, are there particular composers you concentrate on or particular periods? Not really. It depends. We we have so schwerpunkt. So um, we fo we focus on different themes every year. But it so any but the themes are very free. It can be um, a composer. It can be a certain period or just a theme. For example, this year we have the theme is reflections. It's a bit vague. And it's reflections about different things. For example, the first concert is next Saturday, 12th of, of February. And it's about ba it's a, uh, Bach. Uh, the program is all Bach. And a new piece from the Cembalis, who was a, he's a brilliant um, composer and improvis improvis does improvisation on the cembal, on the organ, on the piano, and everything. And he composed a piece reflecting on Bach music. And Tell me his name again. Rudolf Lutz. He is the, um, the um, he is, he has a European or maybe inter I mean international um, how do you say um, sorry um, he became internationally known because he's the um, artist director of the Bach Stiftung in St. Gallen and he did in the last years all Bach cantatas it was under on his uh, conducting. He was conducting that. And does his music relate back to Bach, or is it contrast very different differently? I don't know. I never heard the piece. He composed the piece for our concert, so I will hear it on Saturday the first time. And I don't know if he, maybe he's going to improvise. I gave him that. That's some. That's also something particular about Festival Klanglichter. That I'm the artistic director, and I'm actually organizing basically everything. I have a small team of people that work for me. And I'm actually completely free. I'm just supported by these people that they, they give an incredible support. And I can discuss the program of every single concert with the musicians that I invite to play. And I find, I enjoy this incredibly much because there is not one character of, of, that goes through the whole, there is my main idea, but we can give a different lights different lights to a different light to every concert because every musician has the possibility of of giving his own or her own um ideas or yeah um, as the thinking of course reflections are you playing miroir in there yeah no miroir i'm not <laughs> miroir i'm not but there is a whole uh, there is a piano recital planned played from Adrenetica. And with the with the music with the music uh, how do you say music musicologist and um, forger very special person Roman Broadbeck that will uh, mod, uh, do the moderation of the, the he will accompany the public through the evening and there will be only music of Debussy but there will be reflection in the water and. Um, yeah, Mirwa, we had already in another occasion some years ago. That's why it's not going to be played this year. When did you start the festival? We started in 2015. So there we are, seven years. Did you, did you find the COVID period really difficult? 
Yes, we found the COVID period very difficult, but we had to cancel only one concert. And um, this is, I'm really proud of it. It was a very, very big amount of work, like for every, every musician, every um, organizer. We had to postpone different concerts and we, we never, um, we never um, went to digital concerts. We only wanted to, we, we didn't have the possibility of doing it. And we were convinced of the value of doing the concerts live. We had, we had, we had, some, we had to repeat two, uh, three times, the con uh, three concerts we had to repeat twice in one day because there was a restriction of how many people could come in the audience and it was sold out and we, I, we couldn't face to send people away. So we said we play twice, one concert after the other. So we had both times full hall and it was a very intense, um, intense experience, I have to say, this COVID time. We've suffered from it, we have a bit less public now. But I think it's coming. I saw how the tickets are sold for Saturday. I think it's coming back very well. I'm very positive about that. Now, you spread your concerts across half the year, don't you? I wonder why you do that rather than have it focused in perhaps a one or two week period. Um, the um, first time that it happened because of pr very practical reasons, because I wanted precise musicians and they could not, I couldn't manage to organize the dates. Um, and then I saw that this um, format, this way of spreading the concerts is very good for the public because it's quite a small place and it's for the people who live there, it's com very comfortable, but for other people that come from a bit more far, it's quite um, a trip to come there. And um, I had to, I have the I never tried. I always wanted to try it, to to condense the, the concert in in a sense. But I the people are, are so happy like this. So if you have something that is working, why try something else? I always thought <laughs> maybe one day we'll try. I don't know. This year we have five concerts, and until now we have we had four concerts. So there is some things change. I'm very open to changes. I like changes. Maybe if it happens that some musician can come only in, in a certain time, then maybe I will change. We'll see. <laughs> do the performers give more than one concert or do anything around the concert? I mean, do they, do they give educational concerts or do they do little side concerts along the way? Uh, no, that we didn't do yet. But that's also something that is in the air. We are thinking about it. And it's a bit, logistically, it's a particular situation because it's in the countryside. Uh, it's a small town next next to Basel. It um, mm, takes quite some organization to log logistic, let's say like this. We don't have all the, infra the um, infrastructure that you can have in a city. Although we are in Switzerland, uh, for example, there is no hotel in this place. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> So we have to organize and about the holes, we have to see, I'm, I'm always considering what is um, good for the public and what would be too much maybe for the public. But one day I will take the risk and I will try that out. If, if there's no hotel, where do people stay? <laughs> there is hotel in the next village, <laughs> it's not very far. But, um, or we, we organize private places for people. To, we, we have a small, I, org, I founded an um, association that supports the concert. And people are very happy to help us in this way. And then they, I think the artists are even better in these private houses <laughs> than in the hotel sometimes. And many times there are people who play that have con contacts in the area. So they can sleep at some friends or depends. Do you perform in most of the concerts yourself or do you uh, stand aside? No, I perform myself in one or two concerts every year, so half of it. And um, yeah, it depends. I, I started to do it in a, in a very egoistic way, let's say, because I, I wanted to, to play with some people. I wanted to play some programs, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so... 
I'm quite open that it's so it's the Klanglichter is very people identify Klanglichter with my person because I it stays on it. So when I invite people to play, they often play, oh yeah, let's play together. And then if a good idea comes up, then I can't say no. But it's not my first priority to put myself in the first um, in the first place. At the beginning, I did it because I was not sure if I had money <laughs> at the beginning. So I started to play. I said, yeah, yeah, I don't have to get paid for that at first. And then and then it is yeah, it became. Um, there are many artists that do festival that, that organize or that are the third, um, how do you say the main actors in their own festival. Yeah, it's a bit like this, but uh, it doesn't have to be. Um, Don't tell me about your performing outside the festival. Where do you normally perform? Um, where do I normally perform? It's quite open. I, I'm. I perform in the last years. I performed a lot in Germany, in in Europe, in Europe, as in Germany, Switzerland, France, and Italy. I've been in Italy. I lost a lot of contacts because I left. I come from Italy, and I left. Well, you're probably here. <laughs> I left a um, long time ago. I went to study in Switzerland, and I lived there for a long time. So main my my contacts are mainly in Switzerland, Germany, and France also a bit. Also, and where, where in Italy? Where in Italy do you come from? I come from Padova, near Venice. Yeah, beautiful mm -hmm. <laughs> place. <laughs> the original university town. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, university town. Yeah. <laughs> Paolo, thank you very much indeed. Tell me a little bit about what's coming up this year. In Klangliste. Hmm. So we have this Bach reflections about Bach, Bach on Saturday. Then we have a special program that um, in which I'm playing together with my husband, Four Hands, um, and it's about the story of Clara and Robert Schumann. That's a very particular program which I love. We play um, the, actually the figure of Clara is very strong. I will play a piece of Clara Schumann, and then there will be the we will show how. Um, Schumann transformed a theme of Clara into one of his fam most famous compositions. And your husband's a pianist too, is he? Yeah, my husband is a pianist too. Does that lead to competition for the piano in the house when you're practicing? No, we have enough pianos. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, there is always a bit of competition because who keeps the kids? Who looks after the kids and who can practice? <laughs> Yeah, and um, we will tell, we want to, in this program about Schumann, and there will be also the figure of Bra Brahms. And then we will um, accompany, we will tell uh, to the, we will tell the story of the, some stories of the Schumann couple and some difficulties that they had. And some, and we will want to look inside this story and then the figure of Brahms cannot miss. Of course, Brahms wrote quite a lot of his piano music, not very far from you in tune, didn't he? Sorry, yeah, no, sorry, I didn't get, understand that. I said that Brahms wrote quite a lot of his piano music not very far from where you are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and also in Switzerland. He's exactly. In Switzerland, yeah. yeah, in tune. Yeah, exactly. Um, Paolo, thank you very much. Is there anything you we haven't talked about that you would like to say to people? Um, I would like to say, actually... The third program in this year is very something very important for me is a chamber choir. Um, they will play a very special program about um, it, the idea starts. Oh, there is a connection between Bach and um, tr uh, folks music of the north, so Iceland and Scandinavia, and they will and there will be new some new pieces that were the, 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 there will be the first performance in Klanglichter. And there is a combination of folk music and this classical, old and modern music. And this is very typical of Klanglichter. First of all, that there is first Bach, then there is a Schumann, then this new music, then will be new uh, young interpreters, and then this Debussy program. There is this mixture of things that is not uh, calculated. It comes. And, and it comes from the artists themselves. They propose these kind of things. And we want to be open and we don't have one fixed um, uh, direction. We want to, to make people sensible to, to 
beautiful things and also taking also risks playing uh, all of your new music that you don't know how people will react we don't know ourselves how they are they are being written now and i find that extremely important and i also like when the when the public then for example doesn't like something when they talk about something i think that's very important that people keep listening to music keep talking about music that they have an idea about music their own idea and that we can give that um on that we can pass that on that's actually the most important thing in, in Klanglichte. Paula, thank you very much and good luck for this year. Thank you very much.